Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from round 5 of the Prague Chess Festival, the Masters Edition. And uh, in this game, uh, Vidit and Firuja decided to remind us that chess can still be very much fun and very much, uh, uh, well, interesting, even though most of the games today, at least in top level chess, are endless variations of the Rui Lopez and the Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, this is one, one game where uh, this is not the case. So without further ado, uh, Vidit uh, with the white pieces opens with d4. And uh, prior to going into this round, Vidit is the leader of the tournament with three out of four points. Uh, Alireza is currently on uh, two and a half out of uh, out of out of four. So d5 by Alireza, knight f3, knight to f6. Uh, we have c4 and c6. Firuja goes for the Slav defense. Uh, we have c captures, c captures, and knight to c3. So just continuing development, knight to c6. Uh, black does the same, and the bishop to f4 now. Uh, we have a6, uh, taking away the b5 square from black's pieces, uh, and rook to c1. As uh, the, this is the only open file on the board, so it makes sense. Bishop to f5, uh, and now e3. Now, uh, Vidit prepares to develop the light square bishop as well. We have e6, and now developing the bishop to e2. And uh, here, um, there are a couple of moves that were played in this position. Bishop e7 and d6 are the, the most played moves, although there are others. Queen to b6 is a new move by Firuja. And uh, it is already as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So here, uh, whether you want to keep the pawn or not, you have to, well, you have to decide whether it's okay to give it up. Uh, queen to b6, there are uh, a lot of uh, variations where you can gambit this pawn, like the, like the poison variation of the... Uh, of the Sicilian where queen to b6 is played. Uh, but here, even though it's a completely new position, Avidit fairly quickly decides to castle uh, and uh, give up the b2 pawn. Alireza uh, Ali decides to grab it with queen captures on b2 and now knight to a4, attacking the queen and now queen to b4. Uh, you don't want to overstay or welcome. So queen to b4 and now comes uh, the, the epic move from the thumbnail, a3. Now a3, uh, is uh, requires a lot of calculation. Problem is the black king is still in the center of the board, and you might uh, you might lose your queen if you, like I said, overstay or welcome. Uh, for example, if queen captures on a3, uh, uh, Vidit's plan was knight to b6. You go after the rook, and yes, you will now lose the exchange because of the bishop on f4. For example, rook to d8. Now bishop to c7 uh, will win the exchange, but. Um, Maybe maybe it was uh, worth uh, giving up the exchange because you will have two connected pass pawns on the queen side. For example, knight e4, uh, we can trade here, captures, captures, and now uh, after queen queen to a4 check, you can even trade down into an endgame. And you are up, uh, up the exchange, but you have, like I said, two connected pass pawns on the queen side. Uh, definitely... Uh, better than uh, than what uh, Firuja decided to do. Firuja played queen to a5, and uh, like the title suggests, this is move 12, uh, so do your thing. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for Vidit while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the only winning move in the position, and it's not an easy move to find. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to b3. So uh, w what happens here? Uh, well, the problem is your b7 pawn is under attack. You cannot defend it as the bishop is here. You cannot uh, push the b pawn because of rook captures on c6. But other than that, you really don't have uh, in any good moves. And uh, uh, trying something like uh, queenside castle uh, doesn't really do anything because knight b6 check and the king is out of squares. The bishop covers the dark squares, the knight covers d7. So you would have to give up your queen here. Uh, so uh, pretty much the only thing you can do here is what Alireza played, and that is b5. Uh, saying that, okay, you capture my knight on c6, I'm gonna capture your knight on a4. So, rook captures on c6 by Vidit, queen captures on a4, now offering a queen trade, but queen to c3 now. And again, uh, Firuja's troubles uh, have only just started. Uh, you cannot allow rook to c8, it's such a deadly check. For example, if bishop captures on a3, trying to trying to castle kingside, this is deadly. For example, check, captures, captures with check, king e7, and now queen c7 with check. King back to e8, and now knight e5 uh, will, be, will be deadly. Not, not a lot of things you can do to prevent it, if you prevent it with, uh, with either bishop g6 or 
Rook to f8 doesn't really matter. Still queen to c8 check, king to e7, and now knight to c6 will be mate. Uh, you don't have anywhere to go. The bishop covers the d6 square. So you cannot allow rook to c8 with check. So here, Firuzja again goes for the strongest move. He plays e5. Now the bishop guards the c8 square. There is no check here from the rook. Uh, but now knight captures on e5. So uh, grabbing back the pawn and already you have a beautiful knight here on e5. And here b4. Uh, trying to give more material to activate uh, to activate pieces. Uh, we have eight captures on b4, and now the question is whether you play something or you play bishop captures on b4. Bishop captures on b4 is a very interesting move, uh, but it's a uh, it's a very uh, difficult move to decide to actually play. For example, if queen to b2, uh, now what do you play? If you castle now, uh, which you can definitely uh, do, rook to a1 traps the queen. That's the problem. Uh, you cannot escape. Bishop covers b5. The rook uh, blocks the queen. The knight covers rook. So here your queen is trapped. So that's not nothing not you, what you can do. So after bishop captures on b4 and let's say move the queen, now you have to play something like queen to a3. But here you can just trade capture captures uh, and uh, now go rook to a1 go after the bishop bishop back to e7 and now rook to c7 the black king stays in the center of the board and will be very very hard to, to, to play this bishop the b5 check is coming you cannot capture because of rook captures on a8 so not uh, probably a winning position for white but uh, again it was it was definitely uh, uh, a, a val valiant attempt However, uh, Firuja went knight to e4, he went for uh, for the queen here, and here Vidit just played queen to a1, going into a similar endgame, uh, but uh, an even better one. Uh, with queen, ca you have to capture, the queen is trapped, so queen captures on a1, rook captures on a1, and only now bishop captures on b4, now making room for the king to finally castle. Uh, we have rook c captures on a6, captures on a6, captures on a6, and here uh, finally Firuja castled, but uh, it will not save him. Once again, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning idea for Vidit while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that both the bishop on b4 uh, and the bishop on f5 are undefended. And when you combine those two ideas, you get the move that Vidit played. So for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to c6. This move now wins because, uh, well, like I said, if you, if this bishop no longer controls e7, just knight e7 check picks up the bishop. And the problem is you don't have a square uh, that you can move the bishop to to keep an eye on the d6 square because wherever you go, either captures, captures, or, or captures. So uh, instead, uh, you could try bishop c8, try and give up two pieces for the rook, but not really something. Captures, captures, and captures, and you don't have any any back rank uh, ideas here because uh, rook a8 doesn't do anything. The knight already guards the bishop. You cannot go rook to b8 because the bishop covers b8. Uh, and if rook to c8, well, the bishop just gobbles it up, so not, not much to be done here. So instead, uh, Firuja tried rook to c8, now uh, trying to create some back rank issues. For example, if captures, then rook c1 check, bishop has to block, and then, well, making some room for your own king. But it could be dangerous, maybe if the, uh, the knight comes here, maybe the bishop can come to d3 if the knight moves. Who knows, white is still winning here, uh, but Vidit decides not to give Firuja any chances. So instead, after uh, this rook to c8 move, he pushes g4, which comes with tempo and also frees the g2 square for the king. So you get rid of your back rank uh, uh, weakness while also attacking the bishop here. So knight to c3 was played, uh, now with idea of a knight captures on e2 with check, but bishop to f1, and it was in this position on move 24 uh, that Alireza Firuja resigned the game after having having a, an excellent start to the tournament. Vidit had an even better start of the tournament, and he continues to have an excellent tournament uh, because he's now on 4 out of 5 uh, with, with clear first place. But we're probably going to show at least one more game tomorrow, so we're going to check out the standings then. So here, here you resign because you're either losing using this bishop or this bishop. So like I said, if, if you capture on g4, you lose uh, the bishop here. And if, uh, for example, you try something else, you try to give up the exchange with rook captures on c6, rook captures and bishop captures on g4, it's still problematic due to black's back rank uh, issues. For example, f3, you try and uh, get this bishop away from the defense of the c8 square, bishop to f5, and now rook b6. Again, threatening the bishop, and now rook to b8, check. So once you move, still rook to b8, and there is no uh, nothing you can do against the bishop to d6, and black just loses.
So really, really impressive game. And yeah, like uh, the title suggests, uh, on move 12, uh, Firuja was lost and uh, Vidit uh, took uh, took uh, the opportunity and he, he played it out perfectly. So brilliant game by Vidit. Uh, ho hope uh, two of them meet again in the future as I would very much enjoy seeing more games like this. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, <coughs> uh, Dennis Elfendahl, uh, uh, Dennis Elfendahl uh, Adrian Zarkula, Torkel Stenqvist, uh, Jeff Graves and Brandon Newhouse for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Prague Chess Festival, continuing the Morphe Saga as soon as I get, get the chance and uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions. So thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.